Okay, back to work here. Work is force times distance. So if you take a wall here, concrete wall, and I'm pushing on that wall. I'm pushing on it with the force of 200 Newton. I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm sweating from pushing. What is the work done by me on that wall? How much work did I do on that wall? The work done by me is the force, which is 200 Newton, times the distance that the wall moved. Well, how far did the wall move? Zero. zero. So the work done by me is zero. And the units for actually work, notice the units for force is what? Newton. And the units for distance is meter. That's a Newton meter. Newton times meter. Now, instead of using Newton meter, people say, oh, that's a funny unit there. James Prescott Joule. One Joule, named after James Pres Prescott. I just should use capital J there, but because that's his last name, equals one Newton meter. So we always, when we talk about work, we say the work equals zero joules. On the other hand, if I push the 200, again, I'm applying a force of 200 Newton now on a box, and the box moved actually, the box, I don't care how heavy the box is, but the box moved half a meter. So we managed to move the box by pushing on it. Then the work done by me on that box, it's the force times the distance that the box moved. Well, the force is 200. The distance is what? Distance is 0.5. So we have 100 joules of work done by me to move that box. The only problem is sometimes that you're not pushing in the same direction that you're moving, like this example. Notice I'm pushing and it's going to the right. Uh, last, I don't know if last video or the one before it, we did an example where you, you have your a sled there with your niece in it. Well, say a, a, a briefcase. Are you going traveling? There we go. You're at the airport. You get your luggage with you. This is the maximum you can have is 52 pounds. So you get your luggage stuff or 50 pounds. 50 divided by 2.2. You have 23, 23 kilogram luggage. You have it packed to the top, 50 kilogram, 50 plus, just a hair over 50. But now when you pull your luggage, you pull it on angle because you get that arm there and you're pulling the luggage behind you. So your pulling force here is 100 Newton at an angle of 30 degrees. And you're dragging the luggage behind you and you move that luggage right there You moved it a distance of seven meters. You're standing in line, trying to check in the luggage there. You're going a little bit of time there, pulling this behind you, pulling it behind you, pulling it behind you, till you get to the lady or the gentleman who handles the baggage there. So, okay, I got my luggage with me. Let's put a tag on it and put it through there. What is the work done by you here, dragging that suitcase? Since you were moving the luggage in which direction? In this x direction, you are moving in that direction, you need to find what component of that force in this direction. 
So what is the component of that force in this direction? Because if you take that force and break it up, that luggage, you can break that into two components, one in this direction and one in that direction. The one in this direction is what? 100 cosine 30 degrees, and the one in that direction, 100 sine 30 degrees. So it's 50 in this direction, and what? 87 in that direction. The fact that the luggage moved in that direction, this is the force, or this portion of the force made it move in that direction, not the 100. This portion, that piece. So sometimes when you look actually at the equation for the work, you'll see the work is force times distance times cosine theta. Because you have to get the cosine of that angle. So in this case will be what? The force is 100. The distance is what? 7. And it's cosine 30 degrees. One hundred times seven times the cosine of thirty degrees, and is six hundred and six joules. So a lot of times you look in a physics book and you see that equation instead of the other equation. Why didn't we use it here? What was the angle here between the force? and the direction you're moving, zero. What's cosine zero equal to? Zero. Cosine of zero? One. one. That's why it's not here, because you're multiplying by one. Now, if you go to the gym and if you work out, let's say you do weight on the bench there, a lot of times at the end of your workout, if you're working out with somebody, they go, come on, do some negatives. When you're laying on that bench and pushing, what's the negative? If somebody will help you actually pick up the weight with you, and your job is to bring it down to your chest slowly. Why they call it negative? Because if you think about it, when you're pushing up, you're pushing up in which way you're moving? The weight is moving upward in the same direction. That's theta zero. That's a positive work. But when you bring it slowly to your chest, that weight to your chest there, you're pushing out there, but the weight is coming at you. So the angle is what? 180 degrees. And what's cosine 180? Negative 1. So it's a negative value. The work is negative. That's why they call it negative. Let's do some negatives. You're pushing out, but the weight slowly dropping you. It's moving toward your chest while you're pushing out. There's a 180 degree difference between them, and cosine of 180 is a negative one. You might see that different example, a car is rolling, you go, uh-oh, this is my car. You park your car on a low ramp there, it's not really that steep there, we don't want to kill anyone. Oh. And you get out of the car, you forgot to put the emergency brake, Herc start the car to move backward. You go, oh, that's my car. You start pushing on it. So you're pushing in that direction, trying to stop it from moving. You're pushing of 200 Newton here. But the car is still sliding backward. So you're pushing out, but the car is moving backward. That's a negative work. If the distance traveled by the car, let's say it's three meters, then the work done by you, it's the force times the distance times cosine theta. The force you're pushing is 200 times the distance, which is 3, times cosine what? 180 degrees. Again, you're pushing in that direction, and the car is moving in this direction. What's the angle between them? 180 degrees.
That's a negative 600 joules. Negative work. So when you apply the brakes to your car, what happens to your car? Slows down. That's a negative work done by the brakes. Friction, it's always negative work. Why? The car is moving forward, but the force of the friction is backward. Friction force always pointing backward the direction you're moving. That's a negative work. If something is rolling, could be again the suitcase here, and you see it moving, and it moved 10 meters. You saw that moving, and you go, oh, wait a minute, let me jump on it this way, maybe we'll stop it. You put a force there of 100 Newton. How much work is done by you? You jumped and sat on that suitcase, trying to stop it from moving. Your weight now becomes the force pushing down. What is that force on that suitcase? How much work is done by you? Well, the work done by you is zero here. Why? You are pushing this way. The suitcase was moving which way? To the right. What's the angle between the two? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So it's 100 times the distance, which is what? 10 times cosine 90 degrees. Cosine of 90 is zero. Zero times a thousand, which is zero joules. Because that suitcase never moved in the direction of the force. It never did. Stayed going horizontally. So just because things are moving, that does not mean you have work. And again, just because you're sweating, you think you did some work, the work done by you might be zero because you're pushing on that wall and that wall is not moving. So for you to have work done has to be force times distance times cosine theta. And if theta, again, is 180, you have a negative work. If theta is 90 degrees, you have zero work. If theta any other number, then you'll have an answer for it. Let's take another example. There's a truck in two weeks. I gotta go move my daughter to Boston. She gets her apartment. And we're probably gonna rent a U-Haul to move her. So if I don't rent a U-Haul, and I got a box, this is the ground here. If I take a box that has, I don't know, let's say a fridge, one of those small fridge I gotta take for her. And this height of the truck is one meter. Fridge is really heavy. Let's say the mass of the fridge is 100 kilogram, medium-sized fridge. It's not one of the small ones. Now, if you look at that fridge, if you look at that fridge, it has a weight down. And the weight is what? Mass times gravity. 100 times, times what? Uh, 9.8. So we have 980 Newton. If I pick the box and move it at constant speed, I said the word constant speed is a significant. So I'm pulling up. Me, I got to pick that fridge up. That's P for pull. I got to pull the fridge up. I'm just questioning why did I use the word constant speed? There's a big reason why I use constant speed. Because if the speed is constant, what's the acceleration? Zero. 
since you're moving upward, the net four is going to be what? P minus the 980 equals the mass, which is what? 100 times the acceleration, which is zero. That tells me what? P minus 980 is equal to what? Zero, or P equals 980 Newton. So that says that pulling force I'm using to lift that box up is equal actually to the weight. If that was an acceleration, it will not be 980. It will be more than that. So I'm going to pull the, the, the bottom of the fridge. I've got to raise it how much to put in that truck? One meter. So I'm pulling up, and it's moving up. That's positive work. So the work done by me. There's the work. The work done by me, it's force times distance times cosine theta. The force I'm using is 980 Newton. The distance I need to raise it is what? One meter in the angle. What's the angle between the force I'm pulling and the direction it's moving? Let's think about it. I'm pulling up, right? And it's moving which way? Up. What's the difference between these two? That's the same direction, right? That's zero degree. The difference between them, they go in the same direction, but there is no difference. So it's cosine zero. I am moving in the 90 degree di direction, you're right. But the relationship between the distance and the direction I'm moving there, the force and the direction is really zero. Cosine zero is one. So the work done by me is 980 joules. Now let's modify the problem just a little bit. The same problem, I say, you know, that fridge is too heavy for me to pick. It's going to hurt my back. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get a U-Haul. And the U-Haul, they usually have this ramp that you can pull from the bottom of the U-Haul, stretch like this. It doesn't matter how long the ramp. Pick a number for the length of the ramp. Go ahead. That ramp, what? Five meters, seven meters, ten meters, twelve meters. What do you want? Six meters. Six meters? Okay, six it is. The height's still going to be one meter. I can get this angle now, theta. I can get that angle theta. Notice here, I know the side that's opposite, and I know what? The hypotenuse. Opposite, hypotenuse. What trig identity ties the opposite to the hypotenuse? Sine. Sine, yes. Sine of theta equals the side that's opposite, which is 1, over the hypotenuse, which is 6. So theta equals the inverse sine of 1 over 6. Second sine, 1 divided by 6. 9.6 degrees, 9.59. So 9.6 degree. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to put that ramp down. The ramp's going to make 9.6 degrees with the ground. Let me redraw that picture again. And I'm going to take the box, and I want the box to move again at constant speed. I'm going to push up on the box. I'm going to push on the box. There's the pushing force. And this is 9.6. And let's, if you've seen these ramps, by the way, 
they have, it looks like the, the thing that you put them on, they spin. Why they make them spin? To simulate, get close to no friction. They sit on these like little round rod. As you push on them, they just spin. So there's really no friction there. I'm moving at constant speed. Again. Just like the previous one. But I decide instead of picking that up, I'm going to push on it. First, I don't have to push that hard. This one, I have to lift 980 Newton. This one is going to be much smaller. I don't have to work that hard. Well, I know there's a component in this direction of the weight, which is the mass times gravity times sine theta. The mass of the box, still 100 kilograms, the same box. So let's see, 100 times 9.8 times sine 9.6, which equal what? 163 Newton. And which way are we moving? We're pushing the box to the truck. We're moving upward, right? That's the direction we're moving. We're loading the furniture into the truck. So you're going upward, so F net equals mass times acceleration. What's the net force? Well, the net force is the pushing force minus 163 equals the mass of the box, which is 100. And if you move in a constant speed, your acceleration is zero. That says your pushing force has to be 163 Newton. Much less, way less than I had to, when I picked it up. Notice when you pick this one up, 980 Newton. This one now, I'm only going to push with 163. I'm not killing myself. This one, you got to be one of the, that show the strongest man. When they pick these, they pull like a truck behind them. So somebody got to be really strong to pick that fridge. Where this one, you don't have to be that strong. It's only 163 Newton. Well, how much work is done by me? Curious about the work. The work done by me, I pushed it with the force of how much? 163. My force was 163 Newton. The distance, which is the length of the ram, how long the ram was, we said? Six meters times cosine zero degrees. Because we are moving, pushing in that direction, moving in that direction. So the angle between the push force and the direction you're moving is zero. Cosine of zero is one. It's 980 new joules. And how much the work when I picked it up, by the way? 980 joules. See it? Same answer. So if you push it on that ramp, or if you pick it up and put it there, the amount of work done by you is the same thing. But instead of killing yourself and using a force that big, you only have to use a force that small. Wheelchairs, if anyone ha ha knows somebody has a wheelchair ramp there, the law says, what is it, every 10, 12 feet, I don't know if it's 10 or 12, for every 12 feet or 10 feet long, you gotta have one foot rise. The amount of work done by the people in the wheelchair is the same, but when you're pushing with your arm, it's like lifting that if it's really steep. They gotta pull with the force that big. By making it long and one foot up there, they only have to push a smaller force, and they can push themselves into that ram without any help. If you make the ramp steep, there's no way they can do it, they need some help. That's a lot of actually push or pull force versus that one. But the amount of work done is the same thing. It's just nice and slow. Let's put some friction here. So we eliminated friction there. Let's put some friction.
time is it? We have a few more minutes. We have a car. I hate this. Uh, it's coming down a ramp. Here we go. Sliding down the ramp there. Small car, looked like a smart car. And it moved down 24 meters. The ramp actually makes an angle. I gotta hunt for these numbers. Five degrees. The car, well, it's not really a small car, but it has a mass, I'll change it, to 550 kilogram. As it says, small car, smart car. That's the mass of it. Now, let me give you some friction there, coefficient of friction. Mu k, I want to practice friction. The kinetic friction between the tires and the road and the wind and all the factors there, the friction, let's say it's 0.25. Again, you park the car there, you, st you want to rush there, you got out of the car, you forgot the car neutral there, and the car start to slide down. So there is no engine, nobody's driving the car, nothing, just sliding down, because otherwise we have to know what that force is. So this is what we know when you look at free body diagram. This is the car. You get the weight straight down. You get the normal force there. And it's moving down. If it's moving down, there's a friction force in that direction. Fk, kinetic friction, because it's moving, which is mu k times n. That's your free body diagram. How much work is done by gravity? How much work is done by you for the car to move from here to here, which is 24 meters? Again, if I make This one, my y-axis, and this is my x-axis. Notice this is 5 degrees, not it looks like 50, but that's 5 degrees. If this is 5, then this angle is what? 85, which leaves this one to be 5. So if you clean your free body diagram, if you decide to do it nice and clean, this is what we have. We have the friction force in this direction. This is Fk, which is mu k times n. This is the normal. And now the weight down, right, like this, which is mass times gravity, 
at an angle of five degree angle. The five degree with respect to the y axis. So I'm going to break it down to x and y component. I'm going to take this piece and break it down to x and y components. It's going to have a, a value in this direction, and it's going to have a value in this direction. The value in this direction, m times g times sine theta, and the value in this direction, m times g times cosine theta. This is the mg sine theta coming down the ramp mg cosine is in this direction. So let's see what these numbers, the mass of the car, 550 times 9.8 times the sine of 5 degrees, 470 Newton. And this one, which is what? 550 times 9.8 times cosine five degrees, five three six nine, fifty three seventy. Okay, I'm gonna change the coefficient of friction because otherwise the angle is not that steep. It's not gonna move on that. Let's make it 0.025, the coefficient of friction. 0 0.025. Now again, the fact the car wasn't just going up and down in this direction, that tells me the normal force must equal to that one, 5370. Five, Five degrees is really nothing, minor slope, so the car is not going to move. But if I raised it at 0.25, it will slide, so I have to adjust that. Now I know what that kinetic friction is. Based on that number, is going to be what? 0 0.025 times 5370, which is 134.2. I don't care about the net force and the acceleration. They're not, I'm not really asking for that. But if you do want to find it, I didn't ask for I asked for the work. But I'll do that. If you want to find the acceleration, how fast the car is moving, you go, well, this force is bigger than that. It's going to move in this direction. That's this direction. So this is what I know, basically. This is the car. I have a component of the weight in this direction of the value of that, which is what? 470 Newton. And I get the friction force, Fk, which is 134. I have a yes. Um, would you, how can you put the 5370 for, for N? Because they have to be equal. Otherwise, the car will be going in this direction, um, you know, up and down. The question, why would you put this number equal to that? I said, well, if these numbers are not equal. Not that. How can you plug in for n? Yep. Going 5370. Because that has to equal to that value. If this number is 5370, that has to be 5370. You have a road like this and something sitting on it. Oh, okay. If and one is, is bigger. Normal. Yep. And is for normal. Yes. I thought that was for like Newton. No, that's the normal Sorry. force. The units are N2 for Newton, but N at the beginning, it's a normal force. Okay, yep. 
or I should say Fn. Maybe I'll do Fn from now on. F normal. How's that? But either way, now I understand. I thought I would just ask. Yeah. I didn't think of that. Fn, but that'll be a good actually way of looking at. It. So Fn. Here we go. F normal. I have no problem putting that. Uh, five three seven zero, and a component of the weight down has to be five three seven zero. So these two have to equal to each other, because the car is sliding in this direction. Again, if I'm looking for the acceleration, which is I'm not asking for it, but I'll do it. The fact I'm moving down in this direction, so the net force is this minus that. 470 minus 134 equals the mass, which is 550 times the acceleration. What's 470 minus 134? 336 equals 550 times the acceleration. 336 divided by 550 is 0.61. So the car is sliding down, picking up speed, but not flying down the hill. The angle is not too big. That wasn't my question. When I asked the question initially, I said the car moved on this ramp 24 meters. What is the work done by gravity? This is the force due to gravity. The portion of the force in this direction that was due to gravity. So the force done by gravity is this force, which is 470, times the distance, which is 24 meters. And the force is pointing down and it's moving down. So the direction is zero between them. Four seventy times twenty four, and that's eleven thousand two hundred and eighty joules. Oh, the work I said F. The work done by gravity, not F. What's the work done by the friction force? Now notice the friction force is pointing backward, 134. The car still moved down 24 meters. But the difference between them, the angle between them was what? 180 degrees. The force was pushing upward in that direction, and it moved down this way. So that angle between them is 180 degrees. That's a negative 3,216 joules. So the work done by the friction force is negative 3,216. The work done by gravity is positive I have a couple more things in this section. I'll mention them quickly. Then we'll stop and go to the lab. What about if you have a spring? What's the work done by a spring?
The definition for work done by a spring, it's one half k times x squared. One half k times x squared. So if we take a spring and this is the spring but now we compress the spring there's the distance of two centimeters compressed it and let's say this spring has a constant k equals 50 for this spring well if you compress that spring, if you hold it with your hand, which way the spring is pushing? It's pushing on your hand, right? It's pushing this way. And when you move your hand, which way is it going to move? Towards you. Towards you. That's why the work done by a spring is a positive number, not a, not a negative. Because it's pushing in that direction, it's going in that direction. What happens if the spring was this, but you stretched it like the above picture? When you pull on it, the spring is pulling which way? Pulling back, and when you let go, which way is it gonna go? The same direction. So the work done by a spring is always positive. So what's the value? How much work done by the spring based on these numbers? That would be one half K, which is in this case 50, times X, which is 0 0.02 squared. And that's 0.01 joules. Not a lot, because I'm giving you really a weak, weak string, spring there, k is small. And I didn't stretch or compress it that much by 0.02 or 2 centimeters. So it's not much work. Now, if you get a car actually spring there, and the car spring might be, has a k of equal 2,000. even higher than that. And now you compress that two centimeters. Then the work here done by the spring is equal one half K, which is 2000 times 0.02 squared. And that's 0.4 joules. Trust me, a car, K on a car is much larger than that number, but I'm just showing you that number is nothing. So that's how you calculate the work done by a spring. And the other piece in the chapter I want to add to it, it's power. We talk about power here. I think power, yep, yeah, power is here too. Then we're done with this and we go to the lab. What's the power? Definition of power. Power is defined as the amount of energy divided by time. Now, and the unit for power, unit for energy is joule, unit for time is second, so it's joule per second. But instead of using joule per second, one joule per second is equal to one watt. When you get a light bulb, it says 75 watts on it, 60 watts. It was named after James Watt, who is actually um, did a lot of work on power and energy. James Watt lived, was born in 1736, died 1819. He's a Scottish engineer. If you have a pool, you probably have a, a pump for the pool, a filter, and the filter or the car comes in horsepower. One horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts.
Now, just some numbers to think about. When your fridge is running, the amount of energy there, the power there, per second, he uses 615 joules every second. That's an average fridge. TV uses 200 joules every second. That's 200 watts when the TV is running. The fridge here is 615 joules per second, which is what? 615 watts. So um, if you have one fridge in your house running, that's equivalent to having three, t three TVs running at the same time in terms of energy there. If you have a car, doesn't say what mass here, but going at 40 miles per hour, moving at 40 miles per hour. How much energy in it? How much power? Approximately 70,000 watts. That's a lot of energy in that car. The bigger the car, the more power. The faster you go, the more power you have. That's why when you see an accident, the car is demolished like, wow, I can't believe that car did that much damage. Check the speed. Or check the car that hit you. Because the car that hit you might be a Suburban. And you're driving a smart car, you just gotta pray that you come out in one piece. That Suburban is heavy. That smart car is gonna be nothing. I was flying my plane one time when I was a student pilot, and I come out of Northampton. I just clear the mountain. I look, and there's a, a C5 coming from behind. I can hear it, but I can see it. Like, oh, 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 oh shoot. I turn on the plane. The teacher goes, what's the matter? I go, well, I don't want them to crash. I don't want to hit them. He goes, crash? They won't even know you hit them. The only way they'll know you hit them if you hit them on the windshield. It's probably true. If you're running outside, if you're jogging, and a fly lands on your back. If, if you're wearing a t-shirt, you won't even know there's a fly on your back. Or a fly hits you in your chest. You won't notice that. The only way you'll notice if it hits you in the eye. You know, oh, shoot, somebody just hit me in the eye. You'll know that, but otherwise you're not gonna feel it. The mass of that fly compared to your mass, day and night. The speed they're moving versus your speed, you know, like I'm talking about the plane. That plane was actually taken off probably the same speed as me because takeoff is not. But once they start cruising and they go in a high speed, there's a lot of power in these planes when they're moving. Look at 9-11, you know? Look at the damage that plane did. A plane going 600 miles per hour, heavy, heavy plane. That's worse than a nuclear bomb. So let's look at some examples here, how do we calculate power? How many horsepower? Here is an example. Uh, let's give you a good story. I'll give you an incline there. You're actually driving here. There's a truck in front of you on, on the Mass Pike, the highway. And this truck is moving at 50 miles per hour. And there's you behind them going 50 miles per hour. You decide, I had enough with this. I need to pass that car. So what do you do to pass it? You step on the gas, and now you go past them. That means you're not going 50 miles per hour now, you're going what, maybe 60 miles per hour. And let's assume your car has a mass of 1,200 kilogram. I'm just making numbers up. So you want to pass the, the truck there.
uh, how long, let's say, let's pick time. How long you want to pass the car? What's an average time? Let's see, you want to pass it like what? In four seconds? You don't need that much powerful car there, but if you want to pass it faster than four seconds, you need a bigger engine. We'll do it for four seconds. We'll do it for two seconds. We'll see if we have, for example, Honda Accord. Does it have that horsepower to get you to move that in two seconds? Now, we have an object that's moving. Hmm. Notice when we talked about energy, force times distance. Hmm. Force times distance. We said that's work. Well, let's think about this. Work is what? It's force times distance. What is the unit for force? Isn't that mass times acceleration? Isn't force Newton say mass times acceleration? Mass times acceleration times the distance. Ma mass is kilogram. Acceleration is what? Meter per second squared times the distance, which is what? Meters. So the units are kilogram, meter squared, second squared. These are the units. When an object is moving, it has energy we call it kinetic because it's moving. And the units for that one, I mean the equation for that one half mv squared. That's the kinetic energy. Let's see if this actually the units are matching to see if that's really true there. The one half does not have any units. The mass is what? Kilogram. And the velocity is what? Meter per second, but you're gonna square it. So if you square that, what are the units? Kilogram meter squared over what? Second squared. Do these units match? Are they the same? That's the same units. This is the equation for something called kinetic energy, an object that's moving. Next class you'll hear about potential energy. Potential due to gravity going up and down. Kinetic something is moving. The amount of energy in something that's moving, it depends on two things. It depends on the mass and your velocity is squared. So what's worse? What's worse actually the speed. Because if you take a car going at 40 miles per hour and you double the mass, keep the same speed, double the mass, your work is going to double. But if you take a car going at 40 miles per hour and you double the speed, the work will be four times that. The damage will be four times that number. So the speed is really worse than the mass because you're squaring that number. So when you square the velocity, when you make it a factor of two, you square it, that's four times worse. So that's the equation we're gonna use for kinetic energy. So we're gonna look at the kinetic energy before, the kinetic energy after, and find the difference between them. That's the change in energy you needed to pass that car. So the change in work, change in energy, work is equal, um, one half mass times V final squared minus one half mass times V initial squared. The change in the kinetic energy at the beginning and the kinetic energy at the end. So one half, the mass of your car is what? 1200. Final velocity, let's see what 60 miles per hour is in terms of meters per second. 60 divided by 2.24. Oh, gotta turn on first. 60 divided by 2.24 is 26.8 meters per second. And what about the initial? 
It was 50. What's 50 divided by 2.24? 22.3 meters per second. So V final is 26.8 squared minus one half the mass, which is 1200 times V initial, which is what? 22.3 squared. Okay, the change in energy is 30, 130 plus you, 132,570 watts. I mean joules, I'm sorry, not, we didn't get to the watts yet, joules. What do we use for power? The letter P here? Power P. So the power here is the change in your energy divided by time. We increase our energy by 132,570 joules. And we said what, in four seconds? That is 33,143 watts. That's how much power you'll need from your car to be able to pass that truck in four seconds. If you decide to do two seconds, you need twice that number. How many horsepowers, by the way? We said one horsepower is equal to what? 746 joules, right? So take that number and convert it to horsepower. Let's see if your car, if you have a Honda Accord, I don't know how many horsepower the Honda has. Watts here, not joules. Divided by 746. You need 44.4 4 horsepower to get you to pass that truck there in four seconds. Again, if you want to do it in two seconds, you'll need 88 horsepower, 89 horsepower. That number will be double. So to pass that truck in four seconds requires having 44.4 additional horsepower. That's the power you're gonna push with to get you to get past the car, just go 60 miles per hour and pass that truck. You wanna do it in two seconds, you need 88.8 .8 horsepower. Most cars have that easily in them. Almost any car, including a smart car, has at least uh, 100 horsepower, I'm assuming, in it. Because the smart car is really light there, too. So you should be able to pass the car in four seconds. Yeah. To get 88, um, I mean, to do it in two seconds, a smart car might not do it. Or a smaller engine car might not do it. Okay. Okay.